Ooh, yeah, man. Woo, that's how you do it. Oh, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome, United Movement. Hey, man, welcome back. This is how I'm spending my quarantine. I'm like getting swole. Y'all see it. Don't front on it. You can be like it. Just hit the, hit the gym too. Hit the gym like me. But welcome back, guys. Hey, man, we are starting up a brand new series this week. And so you know what we always do. I need to hear them hands, feet. That series is, ta-da, faith training, man. Faith training. Again, when I think of faith training, the first thing I think of is weights, which is why we're in the gym. We're working it out. We're working it out. So what we're going to be covering during this series is how to build up our faith. Sometimes we spend so much time building up the ex exterior, like me. Like I, I, I'm, you, you see the muscles. Don't front on it. Don't, don't front. So we spend so much time on the exterior that we forget about the interior. We forget about building up our faith, which is the main thing. It's the only thing that pleases God. So if it pleases God, that means we should spend a little bit more time discussing it, right? Yes, yes. The answer is yes to that, is that question, that question, right? So the first thing that we're going to cover this week is circuit training, man. Circuit training. So uh, the interesting piece about circuit training, again, it's a form of working out. Um, but what's interesting about circuit training is you, you'll have like a bunch of different things which you'll do. Like you may hit the bench. Uh, you may hit the heavy bag for a bit. You may do some crunches for a bit. You may do five to ten reps. But again, you do them... You, 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 go, you hit each area, and you hit each area for a specific amount of time with a very little bit of rest in between. That's what makes circuit training stand out. And again, what it almost makes me think about is, is in the same way that we build up our muscles with circuit training, sometimes God is looking at us building our faith muscle with faith training. The other interesting piece about circuit training is what it, what it also does is, is it maximizes your strength and your endurance. So that's what faith does as well. Again, we build up our faith. We do things that God stretches us with our faith. He's trying to build up not only our strength to get through, but also our endurance as well. So it's a cool one. So what we're going to be focusing in on this week is a particular passage which we all know and love. Noah's Ark. No, it's all right, right? Everybody's like, oh, that takes me back when I was a kid and I remember about the animals in this two by two and Noah and da 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 da. Some of that stuff is just completely wrong because, you know what I mean? We've just kind of made it almost like a big fairy tale. We have the rainbow coming before the flood even comes. Like, all of this is, just seems like oh, you got an animal smiling. I don't know if I've ever seen an animal smile, but, you know, it, we have all these kind of like these things that, that, that aren't exactly the focus of the passage. And what we'll do today is we'll just unpack that a bit. We'll unpack that a bit. So again, we all kind of know the overall story, but let's dive in a little bit. So again, this passage is found in Genesis 6, verses 9 through 13. So let's check this out. It says this. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt and God's sight was full of violence. Sounds a little bit like today, right? God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. What that's basically saying is, like, not only had the earth become corrupt, but it, was, it became corrupt because of the people. The people had corrupted it through their ways. Verse 13 says this. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Imagine being Noah right here, right? Imagine Noah hearing this. Now listen, God is speaking with him. He's been walking with God. He's been talking with God. He's been speaking with God. And, and, and God lets him know this pronouncement. This is a curse. At this point right now, it doesn't even say that Noah's going to be saved. Because at this point, he said, I'm going to put it into all people and all the earth. Could you imagine hearing that? The guy like... God, I thought we was cool. I thought I was your man. I thought. But imagine this. This is God speaking directly to him. But again, what do we hear a little bit earlier? It says this. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among all the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. So look, this is the first point. We're talking about our circuit training, right? These are uh, things that we can hit to receive maximum strength as well as maximum endurance. So this is our first circuit. Circuit number one is this. Boom. Faith talk. Yo, we have to, listen, we have to have faith talk first. Listen, do we notice that Noah was walking blameless and righteous among everyone, in, over everyone in the entire world? 
But again, that gave him access to who? God. Guess who noticed that he was walking blameless and righteous and upright? Guess who noticed? God. Not just man, but God. So guess what? And that provided him access to God. He said, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to tell anybody else. I'm going to tell you this one particular special thing. Look, but that means that we have to put some work in to have that type of conversation. God just isn't telling everybody everything. If we want to be one of those special individuals that God says, listen, I, I, will, I want to have a conversation. I want to have a communion with you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. You got to work it. You have to work that out and you have to have that faith talk with God. But we got to put something in to have that. We got to put something in to have that. But it almost reminds me of Sometimes what we do is we, 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 cause it's not like we don't talk to anyone. We talk to people all of the time. Well, sometimes we just talk to the wrong people and they, those people say the wrong things to us. Sort of like this. Yeah, well, I lost my job too. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, none taken. <laughs> Have you ever had a friend like that? I don't even know if you call that a friend. Like, who, who says that you, you're pouring your heart out and you trying to, you know, commiserate, trying to get a little empathy from this person and they like, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> no offense, though, no offense. So because we all are talking to somebody, but who are we talking to? God is telling us in this first circuit, yo, have this talk with me. I want you to have this faith talk with me. I want to share some information with you. I want to encourage you. I see you. I see that you're doing the right thing, that you're trying to do the right thing. Doesn't mean that you're perfect. Didn't mean that no one was perfect. And he said, I see you, and I want to have this communication, this conversation with you. So again, sometimes we have that conversation with the wrong person, but sometimes we have that talk, that conversation with ourselves. Have you ever just came at yourself real crazy like, I'm such a loser. I am a lo loser. I can't do anything right. I can't do anything. And we're, we're talking to ourselves. And guess what? Some people think that, oh, well, I'm just saying to myself, so I don't really believe it. But, oh, yes, you do believe it. That thought will keep bouncing around in your own head. And guess what that thought bouncing around in your own head will do? It will affect your actions. It will affect how you view yourself. It will also affect how you view others. Because if you're telling yourself that you're a loser, when you have a conversation with someone else, guess, you, guess what they will, you will think that they are thinking about you. Like, they must think that I'm a loser too. So guess what? We have to, again, have the right faith talk. We do, we do. Listen, this verse says this, Proverbs 23, 7 says this, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is or so is he uh, another version says as a man thinks so is he so guess what what we're telling ourselves what what communication we're having will guide our actions it will it will so again and we always sometimes like focus in on the negative like we and i could be a very negative person sometimes like well it's me nothing ever goes my way of course the corona is going to happen when i'm about to graduate of course it's about to be summertime and i was about to go to disneyland i haven't been to disneyland since i was a kid i want to wear the ears and stuff like that i can't even do it right we can all get like that sometimes and with the negative self-talk but sometimes we can also, if we can think negatively, we can also think positively. Romans, in Romans 8, it says this, I am blessed, I am deeply loved, and I am highly favored by God. So guess what? Again, it comes back to we have to have the right talk. When we have to have that faith talk, it depends who you are talking to. But if you're talking to somebody else that is not telling you the right thing, the things of God, or if you're talking to yourself and you are not telling yourself the things of God, we have to have the right faith talk. And that's what Noah had. Noah had the right faith talk. He did. He did. Let's pick up this story. So again, this is Genesis 6. We're in verse 14 right now. It says this. And God is speaking to Noah, so he, again, this faith talk, this first circuit, this circuit one, he's having this talk with him right now. He says this to Noah. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. Verse 15. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark. And make lower, middle, and upper decks. 
I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. Verse 18. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark and you and your sons and your wife and your sons wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. Verse 21, you are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and stored away for you and for them. So now look, this is the key. This is the second circuit that, 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 that God wants to have us do to, again, build up this faith, right? To build up the strength and endurance. That second one is faith walk. Like, not only can we, are we supposed to have that faith talk with God, but we have to have a faith walk with God. Okay, let me go back to this verse real fast. Check this out. And I highlighted these in, in, in pink here. Look what it says. Again, after God had this conversation with them, they're having this communion, they got a personal relationship, they're having this communication. And he's like, hey, I'm going to destroy everything. But look what he says to Noah. He says, so make yourself. Verse 14, verse 15. This is how you are to build it, right? Verse 16, make a roof for it. Put a door. Verse 18, but I will establish. Verse 21, you are to take. What? People are like, well, God, you said that you're going to destroy the earth. You said that the people are evil. You said that, they, why don't you do it, God? You, you, you God, right? Why can't you do it? He said, no, 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 no. This is how you build that faith muscle. Listen, there has to be a faith to walk along with that. God said, yeah, I can do it, but I'm trying to get something out of you. I'm trying to build something in you. I'm trying to build you up strong. If somebody came through and I was like, I came to the gym and I was like, hey, yeah, so um, do me a favor and lift this up about 16 times. Go and handle that for me. Yep, and then uh, I want you to run on this treadmill and you go ahead and run on that treadmill. And guess what? By you running on that treadmill, by you lifting those weights, that's going to make me strong. All right? It, do, do you know what doesn't work like that at all. I gotta get back here. I gotta be on the treadmill. Let me turn the speed up. Ooh, that's too fast. Let me turn it down a little bit. But I, I have to do that, that. That is me. That is me. But th th and this is what I love about this. This is what I still love about this. Along with all of the things he said, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. Verse 18 says this. This is what he says I will do. But I will stand. So again, it's a joint partnership, but God is not going to do it all for us. He's not. He's not going to come through and make our bed in the morning. He's not going to come through and say, uh, God, could you help me pass this test? I didn't study for it, but could you, could you just magically make these uh, words come back in my mind and help me? He said, no, you study for it, and I will give you the grace to get through it. But you have to do something. He says there has to be a faith walk. You have to exercise that, that, that faith. The Bible says this, faith without works is dead. So if you have this faith talk, cool, that's good. You can talk the talk. But can you walk the walk? Or not can you, will you? Because we can do anything we want to do. Will we? Will we walk the walk? Check this out. I saw this. I don't know if some of y'all may have, like, y'all, I think I've been up late all night, right? And so, like, oh, uh, late nights, there are, like, these infomercials which come on, um, right, to, like, fill up ad space. And so one of the commercials, which I love, it, it makes me laugh every time, is this one right here. It's for, like, ab belts. So what they do is they take this, there's, like, this belt, it comes in a little box, and it has, like, little electrodes on it, right? And so you can control it with, like, a little remote control. You put the, you strap it on yourself, right? And then what it's supposed to do is shock your abs, right? So when it shocks your abs, like it's supposed to stimulate the muscles. And then with the muscles stimulated, it's supposed to get your abs. It's supposed to be like, uh, excuse me, I was told there would be abs. But guess what? If you actually don't work out and you just wear this and, 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 and keep stimulating, I do this every day. You know, this, is how I, this is how I do it. This is how I do it. Do you know that you will not have abs? You will never have abs. Again, the part that makes me like die laughing is the model that they give is this guy. This guy already has abs. He has abs and he puts that on there and he's like, oh, well, if it works for him. No, no, you know what this is good for? If you do already have abs, it helps, good, it helps you maintain the abs. 
It's a maintenance type thing, but it does, you have to put the work in. There's not a silver bullet. There's not a, a magic ad belt. I'm like, God, we're gonna, let me put this faith thing on, and then this will make me do it. He's like, no, bro, you, you, you got to walk this thing out. You have to. You have to walk it out. I love this, this portion right here. Uh, again, this is Genesis 6, 22. So this is the verse right after 21, where, again, he's telling him all these things. I'm going to destroy the earth. I'm going to make this covenant with you. This is that part of the faith walk. Circuit number two, verse 22 says this. Noah did everything just as God commanded. Noah did everything just as God commanded. Listen, I love this because again, the verse could have easily said, Noah did everything and leave out this and say, Noah did everything God commanded. Mm-hmm, but okay. Qualifier here. Noah did everything just as God commanded. Listen, that is that is a specific qualifier. Again, it's like if if uh, your mother is like, "Hey, uh, do me a favor and take the trash out, right? Take the trash out. Make sure you take the trash out before I get back back home, right?" And so before she gets back home, the trash is outside, right? You, the trash cans are outside, but they're outside, and like one of them, they're, they're both like laid down on their sides. And then you, 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 your mother says like, uh, "I." I told you to take the trash outside. I did take the trash outside. You're like, but like the trash is all laid on the side and like the stuff is falling out. But, but when you say take it outside, did you not say take it outside? It's like if God told Noah, he said, yo, build the ark. And then he said, listen, make it this high, make it this long. And Noah was like, I'm just gonna build the ark. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna build, I'm just gonna build the ark. I'm just I did build the ark, right? No, no, it says he did it just as God commanded. This cube is high. Leave a, a space in between uh, the, the roof and the, and the bottom. If he hadn't done that, guess what would have happened? With all these animals on this boat, it would have stuck horribly. Could you imagine? No ventilation, no circular airflow, like no nothing. This would have been a bad deal. Well, listen, when we follow God, when we walk it out, that circuit too, we have to do it just as God commanded. So look, this is the, uh, the, last, the last point. I'll give you a quick pro tip. This is our pro tip, uh, our, our workout pro tip. Check this out. Working out versus training. Working out versus training. There, there's a big difference between working out and training. Have you ever been like, yo, I'm, I'm going to go work out today. I'm, I'm going to go work out. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go train today. Sometimes they can sound, they can sound very similar. Like, well, what's the difference? If I'm working out, I'm training. Uh, I don't know about that. They're different. And again, the, 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 the definition of them are even different. Check this out. Training if we jump with training, training is an activity used to prepare for something. Like that is specific. It's like saying, hey, I'm going to work my legs out, right? And I'm working my legs out because guess what I'm doing? I'm planning on doing a long jump. I'm planning on, so I'm going to work specifically this muscle, I'm going to work out the quads, and I'm going to uh, work, work out, I'm going to work this stuff out the hamstring. I'm going to work this stuff out specifically because I am going to do the long jump. Listen, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm just simply working out, Look what the definition for working out is. It says exercise done for its own sake. Like you're just working out just the work. I mean, I'm just trying to break a little sweat. I ain't trying to do nothing. Are you trying? Are you working out for anything? No, no. I mean, I'm just trying, trying to work out. Have you ever seen? People, have you ever seen people that work out sometimes and they just like do like little dumb things? Like yo, is that even like what is that? Like what is that? It's almost like this. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure what I just watched right there. Like, I, what, that definitely wasn't training. Like, that was literally working out, but working out. Say, I don't know why you ever need to do what that guy just did. So, guess what? God isn't saying, listen, He doesn't want us to have faith just simply to have faith. He's like, listen, I am trained. You need to have faith trained. This is why it's not. This series is not called faith working out. This is called faith training because we need to train our faith for a specific action. No, it's not simply building a boat just like I'm just doing it because God told me that he's not. I'm doing it to save the world. I'm doing it to preserve you. And listen, throughout this time, not only was, was Noah uh, 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 working on the boat, when he wasn't working, he was serving. Listen, and Peter, it talks about, uh, he refers back to Noah. He, he says uh, 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 Noah was basically a, a, a worker by day and a preacher by night. 
When he wasn't working, guess what? He was going around and all the people like, listen, God is going to bring a flood. He's going to destroy the earth. But guess what? He's, he's, he's built something to save us. Come into the ark. Come into the safety. I want y'all to come. And guess what the people did to him? They laughed at him. Probably like, what's wrong with this little boy? No more he's built in his boat on dry land. They say it was like hundreds of miles from the nearest body of water where he built this boat. They probably laughing at him. At this point in the earth, there was never even any rain. It says that the, the, uh, the springs from the ground will come up and water everything. So there wasn't even rain. So again, for, in the natural sense, there was no concept. They, the people were right thinking in their natural minds like, man, what are you talking about? It's not even rain. You say it's going to be a flood. Like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. So look, this is where this, his faith was built. He, not only is he working so they can see what he's doing. He said, no, I'm going, I'm going the way. I'm showing the way. And I'm telling you, I want you to come. Check this out. This is our memory verse. And we're going to be wrapping up. This Philippians 3.14 says this. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Look, we aren't doing stuff just to do stuff. We aren't being righteous and being blameless before God like Noah would just to say, oh, well, I'm just a good person. Everybody loves to go. I open hold the door for people when they come in the wild wild. Yeah, I say God bless you when they sneeze. I stay back six feet away because they might have a wrong. But, but, but I, I'm just a good person just to be a good person. No, no, no. Noah was not a good person just to be a good person. He was blameless and righteous and upright in the, in the face of God, in the presence of God, so that he could win some. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ. That's in Christ. This is the reason why we do it. If Christ could do it for us, well, well, why shouldn't we? It's the least that we could do to offer ourselves as a, as a living sacrifice back to him. But while we work, we serve. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for your students, God. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you for how you're working them, for how you're training them. Even throughout this global pandemic, you are training them. You are building this faith up. God, let them know tangibly that they are not just doing, they are not just existing. They're not just out here. God, let them know that they have a purpose, that you are building something in them. We don't know exactly what, what, what is going to come out of this, but God, you are building this faith in them for strength, for endurance, to preserve them. You will keep them just like how you did know them. But God, along that way, let them reach out to others. Let them follow up. Let them serve others. Let them tell other people about your goodness, about your grace, so that they can come into the ark of safety, which is Christ Jesus let them come to that saving knowledge. Let them allow people to come to that saving knowledge. Even if some people say you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. God, let them keep going out. Let them keep telling just the way they know it did. Let them know that, that the, the goal is for their faith to be built. God, there also may be some individuals that do not know you. They, 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 they've, never, they've never had a, a, a relationship with you. They've never accepted you as their savior. God, if there's one that believes that you were sent down from heaven, that Christ was sent uh, as, a, as a virgin birth, that he lived a blameless life, that he died on the cross and after three days rose from the grave, he did all of that to save all of us. God, if that person repents of their sins, whatever they did wrong, they say, I know I'm wrong. I know I shouldn't have been doing that. But God, I accept you. Christ, I accept you as my Lord as well as my Savior. Then God, you say at that moment, they are in the family. God, I pray that people will come around them to build them up. Let these other individuals that are, are watching and listening right now, let them come alongside them. So that they can be in the ark of safety as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, once again, thank you so much for coming through. Like I said, we're in this new series called Faith Training. So, guys, make sure that you come back every week. Yo, we always have new stuff going on IG. So, like I said, Mondays is Motivation Mondays. Tuesdays is Turn Up Tuesdays. Yo, we have memory verses which, which go out. We have contests which go on all the time as well. So, guys, make sure that you join them. Also, too, yo, we got loops that go on every single week. We got them for high schoolers on Mondays. On Wednesdays, we have them for middle schoolers. Yo, we have a bunch of stuff going on. Don't. 
uh, push away from connection during these times, guys. Do not self-isolate. Even though we're in quarantine, that doesn't mean that you have to self-isolate. And man, we love y'all. Let's keep this thing going, man. And we out. Hey.